if you currently go to the gym and you don't actually focus on any of the things that you need to be doing, I'm about to blow your mind. All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. And today's main focus is how to make a 12 week training program. So I'm a huge fan of breaking up my training into 12 week blocks. I feel like the 12 week block is a super digestible amount of time for you guys to get some feedback from your training. So you can either change out some movements, change your goal from maybe strength to hypertrophy or hypertrophy, maybe to endurance or whatever you guys want to do in your training program. But if you currently go to the gym and you don't actually focus on any of the things that you need to be doing in these little 12 week increments, I'm about to blow your mind boys and girls, because this is going to give you so many results in the gym and it's gonna make you so much more excited to go to the gym. One of the biggest things that people struggle with is motivation to go to the gym. And the biggest reason that they struggle with motivation is because they're not getting the results that they feel like they deserve when they go to the gym because they don't really understand any of this stuff. This is gonna be an exciting day. Like, woo! If you guys are watching this video right now, Get excited, I'm about to just completely revolutionize the way you guys go to the gym. So, whether you are a beginner or an advanced, this video is gonna be beneficial for you because I have multiple different ways that I can explain this. So I broke it down into three different versions. This version here is gonna be the most beginner version. So I'm gonna start with the hardest one and we'll break it down into the easiest, most digestible version of that. I'm gonna call this one version one. We're gonna start with our minimal effective training volume. This is the minimal amount of training that you need to actually start making a change in your body. Start putting on strength start putting on muscle, right around 10 sets per muscle group per week. So you guys might be like, well, what does that mean 10 sets per muscle group per week? Well, if you're doing legs, for example, from Monday through Sunday, all you did was 10 sets total, right? So if you came into the gym and you did two sets for legs on one of those days, and then another day you did four sets, there's six sets total, and then another day you did four sets, there's 10 total sets. Now it doesn't matter how you break it up and it doesn't matter if you're doing a bro split or a full body split or whatever, push pull split. A lot of you guys have tons of different splits that you guys follow. By Monday through Sunday, you've done 10 sets total for that muscle group. And this is the same for arms, chest, back, whatever. Now, as we get to week three, we're gonna increase this to 12 to 14 sets. And then as we get to week five, we're gonna increase it from 16 to 18 sets. And then right around week seven and eight, is where we're gonna increase it to about 20 to 22 sets. And I put a star here because this is the pretty much the max recoverable volume that most people can do. That's gonna be at the very top range of how much training volume they can do before they can't recover anymore. So as you guys can see, we start low and we increasingly build, 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 build. If you guys trained here all the time, which is where I think a lot of you guys kind of get this wrong, is we get to the point where we start getting a lot of really good results in the gym. And it's probably because you're at this upper end range. And then what happens is you hang out here for too long. And as you hang out here for too long, you wind up getting into this kind of plateau and you wind up getting kind of burned out in the gym. You wind up losing motivation in the gym. This is very, very common, even for people like me who know that I need to, you know, bring things down a notch so I can start this entire process again. You start to kind of get like those feelings of like, I'm addicted to going to the gym. I love going to the gym and you know, I don't need those rest days and this and that. Well, I'm telling you right now, you kind of need to like desensitize your body so that you can get sensitive to the training again. Imagine taking, I don't know, some sort of pharmaceutical. Like let's say you've taken like Adderall before at some point in your life. Not saying I ever have, but <laughs> let's say you did, right? The amount that you would take, you know, in the first week, it's probably gonna be a little bit more than that on the next week and a little bit more than that on the next week or something like that, right? Or any other kind of drug. It just gets, starts to get less effective over time. And your training is the same way. So you wanna be able to tailor it down and desensitize yourself so that when you go back to the higher training volume, you feel it more, right? So it's kind of the same kind of concept. So with that being said, you start at 10, minimal effective dose, and we're gonna start to build throughout an eight week period to this maximal effective dose. Once we get here, this is where you're gonna feel like your body is starting to drag after. You've done a lot of training volume, you're getting really sore, you're getting really tired, and you feel like you kinda need a break. And you're right. So once that happens, we do something called a deload or a recovery week. And this is gonna be a 40 to 50% reduction in your training volume. So how you do this is completely up to you. So you can minus the amount of sets that you're doing. You can take this much weight, 40 to 50% off the bar and just focus on form and good movement patterns. It's gonna be a lot lighter than normal, obviously, 40 or 50% less than you were doing before. You can tailor everything down to 10 sets per muscle group per week, ideally. And then another thing that you can do here is you can just go from maybe a five day per week training program to like three days. And that alone is gonna give you a lot of much less training volume that you would need to start getting you know, back into the beginning process of this entire thing. So again, we're looking at this right now. We're just gonna recap real quick. You start at 10, you're gonna build to 22 sets per muscle group. So one of the things that I think is really important here too is only build the muscle groups that you wanna focus on, 
right? So like if your main focus is glutes, keep building from 10 to 22. If your main focus is chest, biceps, whatever, if it happens to be everything, that's okay. You're just gonna be in the gym a little bit longer. But if you do have some muscle groups, like let's just say, for example, you don't want your shoulders to grow anymore, you don't want your calves to grow anymore, and you're good with like your triceps, right? Let's say you have three muscle groups that you don't necessarily want to grow more. Those are gonna be good with 10 sets per muscle group or for those muscle groups the entire week. You don't necessarily need to build to 22. So that's gonna save you some time in the gym. So you wanna increase here just the muscle groups that you truly wanna focus on and build. So for some of the ladies out there, maybe it's only your glutes and then you can just leave 10 sets for everything else just to maintain it because you can maintain with a lot less training volume than you need to actually grow the muscle. I mean, maybe not right. But I mean, right to me, but maybe not right to you guys. So 10 is at least, it's very easy to maintain everything you have with 10. So we're gonna grow with this set here. Now, again, if you wanted to grow every muscle group, totally cool, just keep doing that. You just, your training sessions are gonna be a little bit longer in the gym. But if you wanna shorten that time, let's say like you don't have a ton of time to spend in the gym, just increase the muscle groups that you really wanna grow. Now, once we hit here, we're gonna deload. Once we get there, we're gonna do a little slight increase, deload again, and then start this whole process. So this is a pretty standard 12 week program. If you guys ever buy a 12 week program online, someone's ebook who's like at least pretty knowledgeable in the industry, this is a really, really common format. It's like the accumulation period, intensification period, and then all of a sudden you have your deload period. That's what it's called, the three different basic intensification periods of it. Next is gonna be version two. This is the one that I personally like the most. So you're gonna start with 10 to 14 sets for the first three weeks. So you're gonna slowly build. So you do 10, then you'll do 12, then you do 14 sets. Next is you're gonna deload fourth week deload. And then we're gonna go 16, so we're gonna add two more, and then 18 sets from five to eight. Deload, so as you guys can see, we're basically deloading every fourth week. So that gives you three weeks to train hard, deload. Three weeks to train hard, deload. And then you're gonna keep increasing the training volume. So we're still getting to the 20 to 22 sets, just like we were here, but now we get to deload every fourth week. So there's a lot more deloads in here than we have here. This is for somebody who's a little bit more advanced. I would say this is the most advanced version because this person, they're still doing the same amount of training volume, but this person is pushing a lot closer to failure. So if you're someone who's a little bit more advanced in the gym, you're probably lifting closer to failure a lot more often than like a beginner. So a beginner can get away with this one super easily and not do a deload for nine weeks. Whereas someone who's intermediate or advanced, you're pushing so hard in the gym, it's kind of nice to get this deload every fourth week. It makes a big difference for you guys. So this is the one that I would say for anyone who's intermediate to advanced, this is where you're gonna wanna be. And then right between weeks one and 12, you're gonna wanna climb to this 20 to 22 sets. And again, this should be on the muscle groups that you really wanna focus on. So now we have this one a little bit more beginner friendly, intermediate to advanced friendly, and then version three. This can really be, this could be beginner or advanced. This is more for somebody who's like, dude, I don't wanna have to think about all this stuff. I really just wanna think about like, how hard should I be going in the gym? So this is an RPE chart, rate of perceived exertion. How close are you getting to failure when you guys lift? So an RPE of seven means that you have three reps left in the tank. So an RPE of 10 means absolute failure. So you would start your training program seven to eight, Week two, eight to nine. Week three, nine to 10, really hitting it hard. And then week four, five to six, our deload period. So this is very similar to this here, but instead of manipulating the training volume, you're only manipulating the intensity. Is this better than this or equal to this? This is still gonna be better because you're kind of implementing this and actual training volume overall. But for a lot of you out there who just, you don't really wanna deal with all this, this is a really good way to go about it. Now, the way that this is gonna really work really, really well for you is to make sure that you're using the same movements each and every week. You gotta have the same movements each week because if you keep varying your movements, it's really hard to kind of bump that intensity up. So when you guys bump up your intensity, you're gonna wind up bumping up potentially the weight on the bar right? It's, it's doing that by default. So that's another reason that I really like this is it's, it's helping you just push a little bit more weight on the bar. If you can't lift more weight, you could do more repetitions and then you could eventually just auto-regulate as you're going through this. Like, hey, could I get an extra set in and not be destroyed tomorrow? And you know, different sets, different reps, different things like that. And I'm going to show you a little bit more on that here in a minute. So this is the same deal. You'd go Week one, two, three, four, deload, and then repeat. So every single one of these versions, you're gonna start at the top and then you'll follow the red line, 
straight to repeat, straight to repeat. So what's important about this, again, is keeping the same movements for the entire 12 weeks. Now, in other videos that I've talked about, I tell you guys that you can change movements out probably every four weeks. So I definitely don't recommend that anyone change a movement out in less than four weeks, unless you don't feel that movement at all. And what I mean by that is you're not getting a pump, you're not getting sore, you don't feel the target muscle. Like for example, if you're doing lat pull downs and you feel it more in your biceps than you do in your lats, probably should change that movement out for your back. But ideally in these scenarios, we keep the same movements for the entire 12 weeks. And especially in this one here where you're only going off of feel. So again, guys, these are three amazing ways that you guys can auto-regulate you know, where you are in your training and then how can I keep continuously getting stronger so I can put more muscle on? Because by definition, we have to create something called an adaptation for our bodies to actually get stronger and put muscle on. So if you guys are going to the gym each and every day and you're not regulating what's actually happening in the gym, your body is not going to change. We can go through the motions and just go to the gym and check that box, we showed up today, you know, I'm, I'm getting it in, but it's like, unless you're getting a couple more reps in, you're adding an additional set, you're getting a little bit stronger, you've tried a new movement that is challenging and you're increasing that RPE, that proximity to failure. If you're not doing any of these things, nothing is happening, you are maintaining. And the scary part about this is if you've worked really, really hard to get to where you're at, let's say you did follow some training programs, you did follow a progressive training app, you did all the right things for a long period of time, and now you're at the point where you really like your body and you're still going to the gym five to six days a week to maintain that body, you could actually go to the gym three days per week and just keep at this 10 sets per muscle group per week and maintain what you have. A lot of people don't realize that, is it takes a lot of work to get to where you wanna be, but it it doesn't take nearly as much work to maintain what you have. So there's a lot of people that are you know, pretty addicted to going to the gym. They're not pushing the limits anymore. And because they're not pushing the limits, they're kind of just doing extra days in the gym for no real reason. So it's almost better for you to have worked your ass off to get to where you want to be, spend one, two, three months going only three days per week with a minimal effective training dose of 10 sets per week and then recharging so you can get excited to go to the gym again, you know, for the next 12 weeks and really push the envelope and really fucking start chasing these like other, you know, bigger goals that you have. I want you guys to go ahead, maybe screenshot this, maybe pause the video for a second, really look at all these numbers and start putting together a good training program for yourselves. And if you guys have not seen my last video, The Art of Building Muscle, that's where I break down exactly how many sets per muscle group that you need for every single body part. So to really maximize the gains for each and every body part. I am breaking it down here, but I break it down for each and every body part on that last video. So now I wanna show you guys one more thing. So just hang with me here for a second. So once you have all these other numbers that we just talked about in this area here, as we start to go through, let's say you're doing three sets of 10 on a particular movement. Now, the way that you would progress from week to week is you would either add two to 5% to what you were lifting here for your sets of 10. So let's just say you're doing three sets of 10 with 100 pounds. You would wanna go three sets of 10 with 102 pounds. You guys have all seen those two and a half pound plates in the gym, you're gonna use them. <laughs> and this is something that you should be doing every week to two weeks. Some people say you absolutely need to be getting stronger each and every week. While I do agree that that is ideal, it's not necessarily accurate for each and every person. The longer you've been training, the harder it is to get that little bit stronger. So it might be two weeks for you and that's cool. Or week to week, you could be adding one to two reps. I put two here, but you could even add one if you're more advanced. Like it might be, you know, three sets of 10 and then three sets of 11 the following week. And that is a new stimulus. That is a new adaptation for our body to overcome and get stronger and get bigger, right? Always think about the adaptation, right? So next is you could add one more set. So you can go from three sets of 10 to four sets of 10. So when you guys saw the chart before, I said we're starting at 10 sets, then we go to 12 and 14 and 16 and 18 and so on and so forth. So we start adding that additional set. That's another way to progress. Another one, and I put this one in red, is a lot of people overlook this one, is you can progress only your top set. So let's say you did two sets of 10 and then one set of 12. So you still did your three sets. The first two sets were sets of 10 and the last set was a set of 12. You couldn't do three sets of 12 because that would just be too much for you, right? Or maybe you couldn't add the additional two to 5% on the first two, but you can do it on one of those. That is a new adaptation. Your body has never done that before. And the longer you've been training for, that's gonna be like the level that you get to where it's like, man, I can only just do this for like one of the sets, but that's still progress, right? It's still progress. So another one, very, very 
underrated, increase the range of motion. If you guys are squatting lower and getting more range of motion, you're gonna be getting more results, whether you do any of this. Like literally, you can just put your hand and block this entire area out, because if you increase the range of motion, you have done a lot <laughs> in terms of progress, a ton. Same thing with, with bicep curls. If you're only in one, in one specific range, you start increasing the range, that's a variable that's gonna help increase your progress. And then number six is kind of a controversial topic. A lot of people say that this doesn't make a huge difference, but I would argue that it definitely does. Increase the time under tension. So UT is under tension. So if you're doing a repetition for your biceps, for example, and you're going down slower, a lot of people like to do a three count when it comes to time under tension. So you just do like one, two, three, up. One, two, three, up. And the same thing with like back squats, three second count, four second count. If you guys have ever seen German volume training, which was really popular by Charles Poliquin back in the day, he has a four second eccentric on each and every lift. And it causes massive <laughs> muscle soreness. So I do think that this is something that you can utilize as you get older, in my opinion, because you can't really handle the super heavy weights, but you wanna have some sort of progress is you can just increase that time under tension. Now, Ryan, what do I do if none of this works for me anymore? Now, you just change the movement. This is when you change the movement. So if you're doing back squats, for example, you're doing three sets of 10, you've been doing it for like a few years, something like that, you've, you've done sets of five, you've done sets of 15 or whatever, and just you no longer can get any stronger. You can't add any more reps, you can't add any more percentage, you can't increase the range of motion anymore. You're just physically exhausted on the movement and you're not progressing in it anymore. Swap it out, all right? Done, that movement's done. <laughs> No matter how many people tell you that this is the absolute best movement for growing your legs, it's just not for you anymore, right? So swap it out. What should I swap it out with? I don't know. You can do a back rack lunge. You can do a Bulgarian split squat. You can do a box squat. You can do a deficit back rack lunge where you put your put a plate on your front foot and get a little bit more range of motion on that lunge. There's tons of different variations that you guys can do. You can do a hack squat machine, tons of different things. And this is really what makes training fun is understanding that at some point we are gonna get burned out on some of these basic movements and that's where it's exciting to bring these other movements in. But you do not want to start bringing in these exciting movements just for the novelty of bringing them in. Just because you saw it on Instagram yesterday, you want to implement it today is not necessarily a good reason to start implementing these movements. You want to make sure that every single time that you guys are starting a training program that you are sticking to it for at least this 12 week mark. And if you go to this like little bit more intermediate advanced area, you'd wanna stay on it for at least like one of these four week little meso cycles. You'd wanna make sure you do that. I mean, ideally, like I said, 12 weeks is really not that long, guys. It's really not that long. 12 weeks goes by like that. And as you guys start to go to the gym and you see your numbers go up, that will motivate you. Most people think that they get unmotivated when following the same training program over and over again. Like, oh, this is boring. Like I'm doing the same thing over and over again. I can't stand this. Like I like doing like a little bit more exciting stuff. I like going Going to the CrossFit gym, I like going to Orange Theory or whatever it is, it's more exciting, it's a lot more going on. Dude, it's pretty fucking exciting when your lifts go up. <laughs> and you're like, man, I put on 20 pounds on my back squat over the last 12 weeks. I put 20 pounds on my bench press over the last you know, 12 weeks. Like, like that, that stuff is exciting. And I want you guys to understand it like this. Every single time you go to the gym and those numbers increase, that is proof. That is written proof and data, for those of you who love data, that you are putting muscle on. You are burning some fat. You are getting stronger. Like that is hard data, hard evidence that you should be psyched every single time you go to the gym. There's nothing worse than changing the movement every time you go to the gym and then just not having the data that says, hey, I got stronger. Because if you're not getting stronger, you're not creating an adaptation, you're not putting more muscle on. So I want you guys to think about it that way. Every time I go to the gym, my goal is to get a little bit stronger. Add a couple reps, like increase that training volume over time. And as I do that, every single time that I go to the gym, I know for sure that I'm making progress. And that is what gives you the, the motivation and the inspiration that you need to keep going to the gym and showing up and being fired up right now. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm, I'm fired up right now, showing you guys the juice, right? So I hope you guys can implement this into Whatever you're doing right now, if you would like someone to do all of this for you, you're like, dude, this is great, but I'm fucking not doing any of that. Then sign up for the Chalk Performance Training Program. I've been doing this for 15 years now. We have 25,000 people on the app. I'm one of the biggest apps in the world. I've got 150,000 transformations to date. 150,000, absolutely insane. And that's only possible because of you guys watching my videos and uh, following me on Instagram and following me on Twitter and all the different things. But yeah, I like to implement all of these things into the training programs I have on the Chalk Performance Training Program. So if this 
sounds interesting to you or you're currently in a plateau and you wanna get out of it, then these are the kind of things that you should be implementing in your training to help you guys get out of that. Now, one last thing that I would like to add before we go here is this reps area. So five to 30 repetitions is the ideal stimulus range for you guys to be putting on muscle, right? So I know I didn't say the exact rep ranges. We talked about sets, but not reps. So five to 30 reps and 30 to 85% of your one rep max, right? So if your max back squat is 100 pounds, you could do 30 pounds would be the low end, that'd be 30% of your one rep max. And you could do it for probably 30 reps. And then the 85% is probably gonna be that five rep range. So five to 30 repetitions between 30, 85% of your one rep max. Those are the reps that you're gonna be injecting into these particular sets and rep schemes, right? And then there is one last caveat that I will just break down very, very fast for you guys. I know it sounded like we were gonna leave there, but I, there's some other really important things that I know you guys are gonna be asking in the comments. So a lot of you guys, you follow me because of the CrossFit background that I had, and a lot of you guys like to add conditioning into your workouts. I'll do this really, really fast. So if you want to add conditioning two to three times per week, 10 to 20 minute sessions, moderate to high intensity. All right. So look at this area here, 10 to 20 minutes a session, because if you're doing 10 to 20 minutes a session, it's not so much that it's taking away from the progress that we need in our strength training. It's not good to be mixing together really aggressive cardio with our strength training if our goal is to get stronger and put more muscle on, it just takes away. So if you're in that 10 to 20 minute range, it's not so much where it's really kind of fucking you up for this stuff here. If you do it two to three times per week, again, it's not so much where it's really wrecking your strength training. And then moderate to high intensity means moderate to high. It does not mean moderate to max effort. Stay away from max effort. You wanna be moderate to high. And then timing. You wanna make sure that your strength training and your cardio training is about three hours apart. So science shows that if you can separate them by three hours, they won't really affect each other that much. So if you wanna throw your cardio in at the end of this, that's okay too. Just understand that your cardio session is really not gonna be at the level you'd want it to be at because you're gonna be exhausted from the strength training session. This might be your morning session and then your cardio would be like your evening session. And then worst case scenario, if you had to put them together, make sure the cardio is after the strength, never before. Some people will be like, I'll do the cardio first. It'll warm me up for my strength training. You guys don't wanna do that. And then what are the benefits of adding cardio to your training? Well, when people add cardio into their training, even if it's on their off days for 10 or 20 minutes, it helps you have better recovery than people who don't. So someone who has like some cardiovascular endurance for like 10, 15, 20 minutes, it's gonna help you recover more in between sets. So while you're doing three sets of 10, you might be able to only just chill for like 90 seconds to two minutes rest. And someone who's less conditioned might need two to three minutes or maybe even four minutes between sets before they feel good to go again. So adding some conditioning in, I do kind of recommend for those of you who have the time to do it. If your main goal though is to put more muscle on, get stronger, then you don't necessarily need it. We can work on this later on. All right, so that's everything you guys need right now to understand how to make your 12 week program. Again, if you want help with any of this stuff, visit chalkperformancetraining.com. You guys can sign up for the app. It's seven days free. You have nothing to lose. You can just sign up. It's absolutely free. Another thing is if you guys don't follow me on Instagram, please follow me on Instagram. It's Ryan Fish, R-Y-A-N-F-I-S-C-H. And if you don't already subscribe to the channel, please do that because I just started focusing on YouTube and I really like YouTube. I don't really love short form content. <laughs> the long form content, it's really the bread and butter that I really like. Like I love talking about this kind of stuff. I like being able to give you guys as much value as possible. So for me to keep doing this kind of stuff, I need you guys to subscribe and I need you guys to share this with anyone that you think it might benefit. So again, guys, subscribe. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Share the video, follow me on all the socials. And again, if you need help with any of this stuff, chalkformance training.com. I'll see you guys.